Drew's next restoration project is a vintage table football game with the potential to be part of the trend for the modern man cave. To help realise its value, he's handing it over to Gavin Bartlett, a multi-skilled craftsman who, after 15 years with Drew, can rescue almost anything. Gavin's role is sort of a bit of everything, really. He's delivery driver, he's packing, shipping, collection, and also does waxing, polishing, repair work, ebonising, remirroring. So he pretty much does everything. Yes, of course. <laughs> The table football uh, that we have that's going to be restored, they're very popular. Whenever we get one, it sells pretty easily. There's a dispute over who invented table football, but the earliest confirmed patent is from a Harold Thornton, a Spurs supporter, in 1923. The basics of his design, with players mounted on eight steel rods, can be seen in most modern tables today. Players are a bit haggard, but I'd be inclined to leave them like that. Definitely. Replace the field. I just don't like that. It's horrible, isn't it? You could put, like, a veneer down or a 3G turf, wasn't it? Yeah, look, it's... It's only really liner, isn't it? I don't like the red, either. The red's horrible. I change that. Yeah. I don't like the red because I'm a Blues fan, so the red's going. That's, go that's going to be one of the first jobs I do. Looking at the side, I've scraped a bit and there's a gold underneath. So if I took that right back to the gold and it comes up all right, I'd like to do this in black. Yeah, definitely, that's a nice idea. It goes with the legs as well. Stand out. And on here, I would go for a light oak. If you can do that black mm. and gold, go for a light oak thin veneer, just one big sheet over the whole thing. Job yeah. done. Join in. So mate. the only thing we're leaving completely original on this are the figures. Yeah. I just can't bring myself to paint them because they're so good. Yeah. They're so good. If you repaint them, it's going to look naff. The table football basically just needs bringing up to a more modern look to it without losing its character. So we can actually turn this round and make something quite beautiful out of it. It's cost 1,200 quid, which is about the going rate for these. I think the cheapest one I've ever had was 900, and that was in a bit of a state. This one will top out at 2.8 to 3.2 in absolutely stonking, unbelievable condition. But if I can get it away for two and a half, I will. But you've got a lot of work to do. The next time Drew sees this, it's going to be totally different. It's going to be the way I want it. It's going to look brilliant. I can't wait to get stuck into this one. Don't make them like this anymore. In the restoration workshop, Gavin's making a start on the shabby mid-20th century football table. Drew picked it up for £1,200 and thinks it could be smartened up to something very saleable. As you can see, the classic football table is pretty basic. When you score a goal, the, the, the balls roll down here and sit behind this flap. And when you're ready to play another game, you insert your coin here. So once you pull this arm back, it pushes the coin back into the coin box and releases your balls, ready for the next game. It's quite a simple mechanism, but very effective. The moving parts are in working order, but to return the game to peak condition, decades of neglect will need to be reversed. I'm just cleaning down the shoots now because they've got a bit of rust in that over the time, a bit of dirt and that on them. So I'm just using an extra coarse wire wool just to get all the rough edges off, really. Get it nice and clean. I'm just using wire wool because it's abrasive just to get the rough edges away of the rust and then I'll go over it with a dry cloth, hoover it, and then I'll probably go over it with a wax. I'm just lubricating all the moving parts on this table football machine, but... All moving parts on any machine need lubricating every now and again or they just seize up, they, they need maintaining, so that's what I'm doing at the moment. The most important moving parts are the scratched and tarnished rods on which the players are mounted. I've done the hard work getting all the uh, old rust off with a sander, but I'm just finishing it off now with a 600 wet and dry sandpaper get rid of any scratches or blemishes and give it a nice fine finish and a nice shine. Yeah, that's the way I wanted it to come out. It's looking a lot better. It's a nice finish, nice and smooth, not covered in scratches. It's worked quite well, that, actually. Once the players are polished up and it's back in on the table, it's going to look, it's going to look the part. In Gavin's workshop, the football table is almost ready for painting. But first, Gavin needs to take it apart and remove all the vintage fittings. Taking it all apart now, dismantling all the pieces off it, ready to get it prepped for painting. Just taking this off so it creates less work, really. So this is out, I can 
paint it quite freely right around the edges without having to mask it all off and that. I hate fiddly things like this. It's probably an easier way to do it, but I haven't worked it out yet. Look at that. Finally, it's time for the coat of paint that he and Drew have agreed will give this table a modern twist. I chose gold, but I don't know, it just came into my head. It looked quite good in black and gold. Anything's better than red. Can't stand red, unless it's Wales, but it's really going to stand out with the, the new pitch and that as well, so hopefully Drew agrees with me when he's seen it. <laughs> I haven't put filler all over it to fill all the holes and scratches in, so we're just painting over what's there, just to keep give it that little bit of character. We don't want it looking brand new. I've started doing the black and gold here. It looks the part, actually. It's hard to tell when you've just done a little bit, but once the whole side's done, I think it's going to look good. Uh, I just chose colours I'd like. If, if, if I was buying it, or if I was doing it for myself, these are the colours I'd choose, and it's like a manly colour, isn't it? So it stands out. It's like a mantique. You put this in your man cave, don't you? While Gavin updates the table, Rebecca Pritchard's been tasked with unearthing the story behind it to add history and value. She's on her way to Bar Kick in London. Gareth, hi. Hi, hi Rebecca. To meet with owner Gareth Kerr, who's been running table football-themed venues for two decades. What a cool place. You like it? Yes. Ideally, I'm going to come away today with lots of information on researching and restoration but also, I'm secretly hoping that Gareth is going to say, come on, let's have a game of football. So are all your tables the same manufacturer? All of our tables are the same manufacturer, which is Bonzini in France. Um, however, we have a sort of antique table over on the wall there, which again is French. Really? Yeah. Gareth, I've brought some photographs along of our football table. Um, I know nothing about the style, anything. If you could perhaps point me in the right direction Absolutely. and give me some sort of historical notes, It'd perhaps. Be a, be a pleasure. Oh, thank you. OK, so here's our table football. It's very nice. I would think that's Bonzini. That is Do you our manufacturer. Your manufacturer? I think so. Why is that? What's the giveaway? Well, they're telescopic rods. All other tables are not telescopic, so it's, are definitely, they? it's definitely French. Oh, I never knew that. So. I would say it's definitely a French Bonzini, which definitely is... I'd put that in the 50s, actually. Kind of would you? Like, yeah. Well, here's, here's, uh, there's the little chaps. So these are the, the cast iron players. I think that they're the same as the ones oh, that are actually, on that table there. That's really interesting. That is, actually. Yeah. Is Bonzini a good manufacturer? Yeah. Well, I presume it is, because your room's full of them. But... Well, it's the leading French manufacturer. Oh, it's leading, is it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. They are... The creme de la creme. The creme de la creme in France, yeah. Ever since the early 1950s, when their Paris factory first produced football tables, Bonzini has been one of the world's leading manufacturers, and the brand is used for table football's World Championship tournament. Even today, they still manufacture in Paris, whereas a lot of manufacturers outsource to China. Um, but Bonzini still insists on everything made in Paris. I think they'd be super interested in this table. Do you? Absolutely, yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So we're looking at something, is it quite rare? I think it's very rare, yeah. Can you put an estimate on the value if we restored it? I mean, if it was restored... I mean, it'd be £3,000-ish. Would it really? So worth more than um, Maybe a, I mean, a new one? Definitely worth yeah. more than the new one, yeah. I mean, if, if, if you put the right moving parts in, definitely, yeah. Um, because there is, the, there is a market for, for, for wow. that. Yeah. Even I might be interested. Might you? <laughs> the day has been brilliant. We've learned the age that ours is possibly around 1950s. Um, it's French. It's la creme de la creme of the table football manufacturers. It's, uh, I'm just over the moon. And I kick some ass. Yay! There you go. <laughs> I scored a goal. A goal against Gareth, who's got the tricks of the trade, and he's, he's a real pro. Oh, but I got one. 
Oh, oh good save. save. Fantastic save. It's a positive ID on what turns out to be a rare table football game. Rebecca's next job will be to call the French manufacturers to find out whether Gavin and Drew's restoration paint job has preserved its authenticity and value. It's a good goal too. Oh, you've got skills, you've got skills. I've got skills. You've got skills. In the restoration workshop, Drew's football table, which arrived in cream and red colours, has been repainted in the black and gold that Gavin has chosen to appeal to the man cave market. And the new oak veneer pitch that Drew's asked for has replaced the worn out green lino. But just as Gavin's preparing to reassemble, Rebecca has made contact with the original Paris manufacturer and she has news. So Bonzini have actually come back and stated that our table is not cream and red, it's natural wood and it's quite rare. Now I know Gavin's put an awful lot of restoration work into this table already, but now I've got this new information on how it should look, I'm not too sure how he's going to take it. Well, I just think. Well, it looks good. I feel a butt coming. Um, Gav, it's the wrong colour. What are they? It's a Bonzini football table. It's French. The true colour is no colour. It's supposed to be plain wood. But we've just changed that. I know. I'm really, really sorry, Gav. So what you're saying is... We need stand to... over there when you told me. <laughs> <laughs> if you swear, I'm going to give you a yellow card. <laughs> I'm, or, only... I'm to, or I'm going to send you off. I'll do the same, only used to red ones. <laughs> um, we're going to have to go back to the bare wood. We've got to be true to the original, and the green has to come back. I know. I know. Well, thanks for calling in today. I'll make your coffee. Thank you. Yeah. Bit of foul play by Rebecca there, I think, coming in late to tell me about the news that it's, uh, it's got to be back to bare wood. I've spent a lot of time painting this and getting it ready. I was just about to put it back together, but it's one of them things. You should disappoint them. Well, I didn't enjoy telling Gavin that. Uh, I mean, poor Gavin. Um, but he does understand that we've got to take it back to the original base uh, we've got to keep the value of it because it's rare. With more than 10 valuable man hours already spent on restoration, Drew's potential profit will have a dent in it. But now Gavin knows the provenance, reducing the authenticity of this piece is not an option. Dry scraping the layers of paint off will be even more time consuming, but it's kinder to the original wood than abrasive heat or chemical stripping treatments. A skilled craftsman, Gavin always prefers this method when working on rare antique. When this 1950s table from a world-leading manufacturer arrived in a shabby state, Drew and Gavin didn't spot its rarity and decided to give it a revamp for a modern man cave. Now, after a major push from Gavin, it's been taken back to its authentic natural wood finish and the green lino pitch replaced. The players and interior mechanism have been cleaned up, all maintaining a vintage look. It's now a beautiful table for the beautiful game. Uh, the restoration went well at first. I painted it a new colour, the colour that I chose. Drew seemed happy with that. And then Rebecca dropped a bombshell and found out that it's a Bonzini table and it had to be taken back to the bare woods. But the outcomes turned out well in the end. And I am happy we got there eventually. I had to go into extra time on this one, but it was worth it. God, that looks so much better. Wow. Different look. Looks fantastic. I love this finish. I got there in the end. Looks really classy, really stylish. And apparently, we've got something very rare. Yeah, I was told. So yeah. I was completely wrong. Effectively, I've restored it twice. <laughs> but I'm happy with it now, but yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's taken a lot of sweat and <laughs> hours. But you've left the important bits alone. Yes. Which are these? Does it work? It does. Never lost. The football table, or the Bonzini football table, should I say, I got it wrong. And the finish on it should be finished just back down to the bare wood. So we've done it. And I have to say, it really works. It looks, it looks fantastic. So we paid 1,200 quid. Yeah. 
We've restored it twice. Yeah. <laughs> it was worth it in the end. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm confident of getting three, three and a half thousand quid for it. Nice job, Gav. Thank you. Very nice job. Gavin was very pleased with himself and what he's done, and rightly so. He's done a lovely job. We can accurately date it. It's in the original factory finish now. Yeah, it's good. Very good.